Okay, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about something I did to improve my chain link fencing outside and save money at the same time. Um, especially if you don't have uh, money to pay for like regular uh, privacy fencing. Um, if you have chain link fencing like me, um, you know that it's pretty ugly. It's not, it's not meant to be attractive. It has no privacy. Um, the only function really that chain link fencing has is to keep dogs in and people out. That's the only function. It's not there to be pretty. It's not there to provide privacy. And I need privacy in my backyard because sometimes we do cookouts back there and I really don't want strangers being able to see into our backyard. Also, I have a couple dogs that like to go berserk anytime a stranger walks by and um, while they are doing their job protecting our property, I would prefer that they didn't go berserk every time they saw somebody because it's really unnecessary. So, um, I will show something, show you something that I did that is actually really affordable, um, especially if you plan someday on replacing your chain link fencing with um, regular privacy fencing. This is a good thing to do in the meantime, I think. So let me show you what I mean. So as you can see here, I have a pretty nasty looking chain link fence and I, you can see that I originally tried covering it up with reed fencing and um, it, didn't, it did a pretty good job for a while, but after a couple years that reed fencing broke down and it um, no longer served its purpose and it looked bad and it really needed taken down. So I will show you what I did. So what I did here was I took a 10 by 20 white tarp and I cut it to size and sewed the edges and put new grommets in and then I attached it to the fence with um, little bungee cords. Um, I know it is probably not the most attractive solution and um, not the most perfect solution and it's certainly not meant to be a permanent solution. But it does serve a purpose of providing privacy and keeping dogs from seeing out at strangers and strangers from seeing in. So I think it's a pretty good solution for now. And it should last a lot longer than the reed fencing. Now there are other um, things you can do to cover up chain link fencing. But they tend to be a lot more expensive. Um, they make bamboo fencing, which is like thicker pieces of bamboo than the reed fencing I used. And it does supposedly last longer. Uh, you can also get slats to fit into like the chain links. Um, I don't think it's very attractive though. Uh, certainly not any more attractive than this. Um, also, you can buy pre-made um, canvases that have printing on them. Those do look pretty neat, but um, I've looked into the pricing and it's a little bit more than I want to spend on a temporary solution. So I will show you how I did this. So some of the first few items that you will need, I don't have prices on because they're things that you most likely will have around the house or at the very least there's something that you can borrow from a friend. So the first thing you will need is a hammer or a mallet. Now I tried using a mallet and then I ended up switching to a hammer and I preferred the hammer because I felt like I got more bang for my buck. No pun intended. You'll also need a flexible body measuring tape to measure your tarp. A sturdy pair of scissors, preferably sewing scissors. You'll need a sewing machine, um, or if you don't have access to a sewing machine, you could probably get away with just using a glue rated for outdoor use. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. Now you'll also need a tarp. Um, I ended up buying a tarp for $23.66 off of amazon.com. Um, 
and the size that you will get um, will probably vary. I bought the 10 by 20 foot one simply because um, my fence is a little bit less than five foot tall and I figured that I could cut the 10 foot section in half so I would, could get two long sections to work with but you might prefer to buy something in a different dimension. Also, I got white. I figured white would probably be the best color to use. I mean, there's probably other colors out there, but blue just doesn't seem like a good color for uh, fencing, but you can do whatever you want. You will also need to buy some nylon thread. I got mine for $2.27 from Walmart. Um, you want to make sure that it is nylon, made out of nylon, because if you get something like thread made out of cotton, there's a good chance that it could break down um, being outside uh, for so long. So you want to get something that's made out of plastic so it doesn't break down. You'll also need to buy some ball bungees um, to attach your tarp to your fence. Um, I ended up getting three packages of um, 25 packs off of Amazon.com for $7.95 each, so I bought three of those. You'll also need a grommet kit with grommets. Um, I bought mine off of Amazon.com. Um, you have to buy a starter kit if you don't already have the tools to seat your grommets. Um, the grommet starter kit for me was $10.64, and then I had to buy three additional packages of grommets um, that had 12 sets of those grommets in them, and each of those were $6.13. Um, I chose to get brass because brass is pretty good for um, being outside and being um, not rusting, so uh, you might want to look at getting something with a little bit better material. So my grand total before taxes ended up being $78.81. So that's not terribly bad for considering what I was doing. Um, so now I will show you how I put this all together. So you are going to start by measuring each section of your fencing. Um, that means that um, any solid sections of fencing will be its own measurement and then if you come to a gate that will be its own measurement as well because you're gonna have separate pieces of tarp for each of these sections so you're gonna take these measurements and you're gonna take it over to your tarp and um, I recommend starting from a finished edge each time if possible because um, if you cut out a middle section in the tarp you're gonna make more work for yourself because because you're gonna have to hem two sides instead of just one. So if you're doing like a section, second measurement, um, start from the, the other side of the tarp. It'll make less work for yourself. And just use a marker to measure that. Um, now you're also going to add two inches onto each unfinished side for your um, hem measurement. So whatever the measurement is on the fence, add two inches onto that and you, that's where your cut line will be. And just mark that out with a marker. Using your scissors, um, cut each section apart on the tarp. So this is where you have a choice to either use glue or your sewing machine. I chose to use the sewing machine because, um, well, it's what I had and it seemed like it would be less messy and maybe it would hold up a little bit better. Um, so you do need a little bit of um, knowledge on how to use a sewing machine. I'm not going to teach you how to do that. If you don't know how to, how to use a sewing machine, then uh, try to find another YouTube video out there to learn how to. Um, so what I did was I just folded over each unfinished edge um, the two inches. I marked it out and pinned it with pins, and then I sewed maybe a quarter of an inch in um, all the way along the unfinished edge. Um, it was kind of frustrating because the nylon thread kept snapping and I had to cut it and re-sew the sections. Um, not sure if I was doing something wrong or if that's just the nature of nylon thread. Um, so if you're using glue instead of a sewing machine, I would recommend that um, 
you also fold it over two inches and make sure that you have that pin down so you have an even edge and just um, use an outdoor rated glue to glue that edge down um, and I'm not sure you would probably want to make sure it's still pinned down while it's drying for that. So this is where you're going to put your grommets in. You're going to put them in the sides that you just sewed. Um, obviously you're not going to have to put grommets in the sides that were already finished because they already have grommets in them. Um, you're going to want to put a grommet in every corner that doesn't already have a grommet in it. And then in the middle sections, um, I just kind of eyeballed it and put a grommet about every foot and a half. I didn't measure it. I just kind of used common sense on um, how many grommets I would need in between. So you can do the same. Um, now as far as how to use the grommet kit, the instructions are usually pretty clear on the package. However, I can go over a little bit on how to do it. First, you're going to put your wooden block that comes in the kit underneath your tarp. And then you are going to put your hole punch um, over the area that you want to put your grommet and you're going to take your hammer and you're going to strike it several times until it cuts a clean hole through the tarp in that area. Then next you're going to put your little pedestal, a uh, metal pedestal that comes in the kit underneath um, the hole and you're going to put the uh, male grommet section through the hole, up through the hole and seat it on that little base. You're going to put the female ring over the uh, male section on the other side of the tarp. And then you're going to put your like striking pin down inside the hole and strike it with your hammer until, uh, until it seats all the way. Now, um, something <laughs> you don't want to do what I did to begin with. I started trying to do this on carpet. And that was a mistake. I thought I was a weakling and that I just wasn't strong enough to do this. And it turns out the whole time I was just doing it wrong. You can't do this on carpet. You have to do it on concrete or something equally as hard. Um, because the carpet is just too soft. It's going to absorb too much energy and you're not going to get enough of a strike to seat that grommet. So don't do what I did in the picture and don't start by doing it on carpet. Do it on concrete. At this point, you're pretty much done assembling your tarp. Uh, you just now need to attach it to the fence. Uh, make sure to use um, all your ball bungees um, in all the holes that you made because um, wind can be a lot more uh, fierce than you expect. It will tear things off of your fence if you don't attach things um, very, very well. So um, you're pretty much done.